to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So we're looking for this side right here. Okay. Uh, we're going to start out doing exactly the same thing we did when we were looking for an angle. All right. So we start out, we take the tangent of the angle that we have. So in this time, we actually have the angle. We're going to say that we have tangent of 70 degrees is equal to my opposite side. Now you could call this opposite side little z over here. For this one, um, I think you'll find it easier if I actually call it what it is. So the opposite side is xy. And the adjacent side is zy. Okay, But we actually know what zy is. We can replace that if you want. So you didn't have to do that first step. I just wanted to show you what's going on. We can replace it with 5. So recall that this is still opposite. This is my opposite side in relation to my reference angle, and this is my adjacent side. All right. Now what we're going to have to do is we need to try and isolate it. So we're trying to get this variable all by itself. Well, we have to get rid of this 5. So if you recall, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, in order to get rid of a 5 in the denominator, we just multiply by 5. Those cancel, but then we're going to put the 5 out in front to multiply this side as well. So xy is going to be equal to 5 times the tangent of 70 degrees, just that easy. All right. You'll note this time we do not need to use that inverse function on your calculator. The inverse function is only used when you're looking for an angle. I'll review that at the end with you. So we go 5 tangent of 70 degrees, just like so. And we get that that side length is approximately 13.7. Often with side lengths, we'll do it to one decimal place. This one did say to a tenth, so we'll write 13.7. Since it's a distance here, we're using with centimeters, we're good to go. Okay, so that's how those ones will work. Let's try another one. This one might be a good one for you to try on your own here, um, just to make sure you're uh, doing these okay. So determine the length of Vx. So Vx would be this side. They give you this as your reference angle. So you always start out with the information that you have. So we're going to go with the tangent of the angle that I have, 42 degrees, is equal to my opposite side, which is xw all over my adjacent side. Okay, that's this one up here. XV or VX. Maybe I'll call it VX because that's what they did. Okay, it doesn't make any difference. Well, let's substitute in what we know. We know that XW is 7.2. So, you'll notice that this question is different than the one that we did before in that the variable that I'm looking for is in the denominator. So, if I go back up to this question right here, when the variable is in the numerator like it was here, you can just bring the 5 up in front. Essentially, I like to teach my students that this 5 just pops right up here. You can do that. Okay? When the variable is in the denominator here, this is what I want you to think. I want you to think that we are going to take these guys and swap. Swap their spots. All right. What we're really doing is we're just multiplying both sides um, by Vx and then dividing both sides by the tangent of 42. So when we do that, we have Vx is equal to 7.2 divided by the tangent of 42 degrees. We'll put that into our calculator. 7.2 divided by the tangent of 42. And we get 7.99 centimeters. So we'll round that to the nearest tenth, which gives you 8.0 centimeters. You do have to put that point zero in when you're rounding to the nearest tenth. All right, turn to our last page, and uh, we'll see what we got. All right. At a horizontal distance of 200 meters from the base of an observation tower, the angle between the ground and the line of sight to the top of the tower is 8 degrees. How high is the tower to the nearest meter? This question really isn't any more difficult than any of the ones were on the uh, previous pages. Um, they give you a word problem, but they were nice enough to give you an example uh, here with a diagram, so that's nice. So we have this lovely triangle here. We're assuming it's 90 degrees. They tell you that this angle is, of course, 8 degrees, so we got that. They tell you that the horizontal distance from this guy, this guy's our observer. That looks like Mr. Johnson right there. Uh, actually, he'd probably be a little bit shorter than that, but uh, that's okay. They're saying that the horizontal distance is 200 meters. That's good. Uh, they want to figure out how tall this is. So let's call this, um, I don't know, what do you want to call it? We can call it h for height. All right. So we are going to use the tangent ratio once again. So we start out with the tangent of our reference angle, which is 8 degrees, is equal to my opposite side, which is 8, sorry, h over the adjacent side, which is 200. Okay. Now to get h by itself, if you recall, 
what you can do is multiply both sides by 200, just think that you bring this 200 up in front. So we have 200, the tangent of 8 degrees is equal to h, we'll put this into our calculator, we get 200, oops, 200 should be times the tangent of 8 degrees, we find out that that tall tower is approximately 28 meters tall, so the height is approximately 28 meters, like so. What's interesting about this one is, let's just say, for instance, that we took a different route. All right? I know they gave us all this information that this angle right here is 8. All right? But we actually know what this angle is right here, right? If we know that um, that's 90, then those two angles must have to add up to 90. That means this angle is going to be 82 degrees. Well, watch this. This is kind of unique. If I deal with this, I can go the tangent now. Let's use that as my reference angle. So I'll do this maybe a different color. You don't have to do this, I'm just trying to make a little bit of a point here. Tangent of 82 degrees. This time my opposite would be 200. My adjacent is h. If you recall, when the variable's in the bottom here, we're going to swap these two. So we have h is equal to 200 divided by the tangent of 82. And check what happens here. So 200 divided by the tangent of 82 to the exact same thing. All right? So that's the beauty of this uh, trigonometry is that no matter which one of these reference angles you end up using, you're going to get the same thing. So it's really up to you. You can use the way that you find easiest. Um, but either way, yeah, you get the same thing. All right? So um, one thing I want to summarize here down at the bottom is that students commonly use the acronym TOA to represent that when using the tangent ratio, Take the opposite and divide by the adjacent. Okay, so we're going to start talking about SOCA TOA in this unit, but so far all we've talked about is this TOA. All that means is that when you're dealing with the tangent ratio, you need to remember that we have the opposite over the adjacent. All right. One last thing that I kind of wanted you to at least remind you about is that um, when you're looking for angles, so I'll just write looking for angles, definitely write this down. always use inverse function on your calculator. Okay, when you're looking for lengths, you don't have to worry about that. All right, so that was that crazy guy that I did when I had to hit the second tangent. That's called the inverse. Okay, so that's whenever you're looking for an angle, you're going to use that.